What's up, Internet? This is the 84th Wolf. And Obsidian Melody. And welcome back to another episode of Wolf Watches. Today, we are bringing you the fifth episode, which... Crap, I don't know the name. Okay, restart. I, God damn it, I knew I was forgetting something. Necessary sacrifice. Okay. What's up, Internet? This is the A4th Wolf. And Obsidian Melody. And welcome back to another episode of Wolf Watches. Today we'll be bringing you the fifth episode of the fifth volume of Ruby. This one is called Necessary Sacrifice. So, um, we just went over Yang, Weiss, and Ruby, so this is probably going to be a Blake-heavy episode. So, I'm thinking something with, uh, I'm, it's obviously going to focus around her. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the necessary sacrifice is something with herself, her family, son, or Ilya. Mm -hmm. One of those things. And, uh, I mean... And we're also going to see the results of Gira's speech to Menagerie. There's probably going to be a lot of confusion. There's probably going to be a lot of nervousness. Mm -hmm. uh, possible grim attacks. Well, you know, fear. Yeah, and fear. Fear goes Confusion, grim. fear. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's about like you said. Yeah? yeah. Nothing to add? Nothing to... <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, you, you, pretty hit, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you think? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. Um... Oh, there was one thing that I wanted to mention. I posted it to you earlier. It's like, uh, mm -hmm. we've been, ever since the last episode, you know, obviously we're on social media and stuff like that. And someone came up with a really neat uh, quote that I really like. Well, not a quote, but just like an idea that the Bronwyn twin semblance is actually mixed up mm -hmm. because Crow wants to, to stay be with, with to be with his family, but he can't because of the bad luck semblance. And Raven doesn't want to be with anyone yet she has these special connected portals that she can essentially visit whoever she wants. Mm -hmm. So that's... It, it was a neat idea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, I mean, nothing else to be said with that. So uh, let's jump right into the episode. <coughs> oh, and for future videos, just to try to avoid copyright infringement, or at least help out with that, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be cutting the intro. So unfortunately, we can't hear that freaking awesome so soundtrack. But, watch the actual episode and listen to it yourself. It's a freaking awesome show. Mm -hmm. Song. Okay. Absolutely. Ready, set, go. Hey, animals that aren't grim. Okay. Or dogs. Are you ready? I beat up on giant monsters and robots more than once. I think I can handle yeah, getting a few sorry. signatures. I'm just gonna lower it a bit. Your chief didn't need you. Your people need you. Please join the fight and help us save Haven Academy. No one knows what what side to go on. <laughs> Everyone's Are kind you of weird. kidding me? We'd love to have someone with your skills on our side. Mata. <laughs> Get back inside. Mom. <laughs> <You're> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be harder than she thinks. Too much animosity. Mm -hmm. Huh? huh? <laughs> well, got their attention. Hey, that's just mean. Well, I guess he's he is that interrupting their work. Yeah. <laughs> the fish. Grim. The fi no, no, no. I'm sorry. Fish faunus. <laughs> Grim. <laughs> Ooh. Blake's sad. She can't have fish. <laughs> if a if a cat faunus ate a fish faunus, would that be cannibalism? I don't get it. Absolutely. How can they just sit around and do nothing with the white fang getting ready to attack? 
Because not everyone is like you and me. The Faunas here in Menagerie, the ones that weren't born on the island, moved here because they were tired That's kind of, funny, of fighting. The whole, the of shots having to struggle water. constantly. Menagerie is filled with people that just want to be left alone. And here we are asking them to put the rest of the world before themselves. I guess I never really thought about it like that. The problem is, whatever happens at Haven is going to affect them whether they like it or not. If Adam gets his way and Haven falls, it's only going to make things worse for the Faunus. Everywhere. Adam. He's the guy you used to... work with? <sighs> yes. Sorry. Forget I brought it up. No, it's okay. He doesn't know about Have you ever history. met someone mm -hmm. and thought to yourself, they are the personification of this word? Uh... Okay, well, I remember getting to know Ruby and thinking, this girl is the embodiment of purity. After a while, I saw Weiss was defiance, and Yang was strength. What am I? Jury's Goofiness. still out on that one. But I'm leaning towards Ernest. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, and the Black Sun Shippers scream. Then I thought he was passion. But over time I realized I was wrong. He wasn't any of those things. He was spite. Not hatred, not rage, spite. He won't accept equality, only suffering for what he feels the world did to him. And his way of thinking is dangerously contagious. That's what worries me about Ilya. She's not like Adam, not yet at least. But I don't know how long that will last. She was your friend, huh? She was. Her chameleon traits meant she could pass as human. She could have lived a normal life if she wanted. But she didn't. I always admired that. She lost her family in a mining accident when she was young. And she joined the White Fang. Like me, she was more or less trained on the road alongside other Faunus. She learned to survive, to defend herself. But as people like Sienna and Adam started to gain a following, she became more dangerous. I guess I did too. My parents tried to get me to leave with them, but I refused. I had Adam and Ilya, after all. You know we're going to have to face her eventually. I know. So, what are you gonna do? I'm going to try and help her the way you helped me. Hmm? You showed me that sometimes you need to be there for a friend, even when they don't want you to be. I was drowning in guilt and fear. I tried to push you away, but you didn't give up on me. And I, like I can't give up on Ilya. From, what is that, volume four? It's about time I saved my friends for once. Oh, okay. So we're getting a little bit more of Ranger. Are you hungry? It's almost dinner time. Uh, yeah. That sounds good. I was about to call it a night anyway. So, you've never fought before? Just the occasional small Grim. Nothing like this, though. Wow. Oh, so he's actually fought Grim before. <laughs> you look like a natural. It's strange. I've only had this cane for a few weeks, but I feel like I've had it for a lifetime. Longer. Thanks, Oz. Like a crazy person. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, just a little. But at this pace, you'll be combat ready in no time. Combat ready. Is that any moment? Well, uh, I'll see you upstairs. How do you handle all of this? That's a what big question. I'm scared. Like, bro, lots of alcohol. <clears throat> I'm more scared than I've ever been in my life. I never thought was possible. I always knew that I wanted to be more than a farmhand, but this? Who would ask for this? Aww. We all went to Beacon because
because we wanted to help people. But you're right. None of us asked for this either. We just have to press on and... How can you be so confident? People have tried to kill you. The world's about to go to war all over again. How are you okay with any of this? When Beacon fell, I lost two of my friends. Penny Polandina and Pira Nikos. I didn't know them for very long, but that doesn't change the fact that they were two of the most kind-hearted people I'd ever met. But that didn't save them. Pira thought that if there was even the smallest chance of helping someone, that it was a chance worth taking. And because of that, she died fighting a battle she knew she couldn't win. And Penny was killed just to make a statement. I'm sorry. I am scared, but not just for me. What happened at Beacon shows that Salem doesn't care if you're standing against her or not. She'll kill anybody. And that scares me most of all. Pira, Penny, I'd be lying if I said that it didn't hurt. That I didn't think about them every day since I lost them. That I didn't wish I had spent more time with them. If it had been me instead, I have been waiting for this. I know they would have kept fighting volumes. too. <laughs> no matter how dangerous it was. So that's what I choose to do. To keep moving forward. Come on. If we don't hurry, Nora's gonna eat everything. It wouldn't be the first time. Hey, Oscar. This isn't gonna be easy. But the fact that you're even trying says a lot about you. You're braver than you think. She really is remarkable, isn't she? Yeah. She must have been one of the best huntresses at Beacon, huh? <laughs> in some ways, yes. But in many others, no. She has her quirks, her faults, just like everyone else. But she also possesses something unquantifiable. A spark that can inspire others even in the darkest of times. This must be really hard on her, too. It most assuredly is. Your thoughts? Are of no significance. If this is how High Leader Taurus wishes to proceed, then we shall make it so. Uh, of course, brother. Still. Come in. They just got Sister a message Ilya, from Adam. Thank you for meeting with us. How may I be of assistance? Please, stand. We have wonderful news. What is it? We finally received a message from the Mistral Brotherhood. The operation was a success. Adam Taurus has claimed his place as the High Leader of the White Fang. Good. And Sienna? Buried with honor. The other branches of the Fang have been given the story that was agreed upon. And so she knew about sacrifice. it. We won't forget everything she did for us. Indeed. Your maturity and understanding in regards to this matter is appreciated. And it is why we've summoned you here this evening. The White Fang is experiencing a transitional period. Growth requires change. And change can be painful. If it's for the betterment of the Faunus, then it's a pain we can endure. What's our next mission? Containment. With the CCT tower still inoperable, we have the luxury of control over the flow of information. News of Adam's ascension has yet to reach Menagerie, 
When it does, the citizens of Kuokawana will undoubtedly react poorly now that the chieftain has spoken out against us. It's my fault the Belladonna's had any ground to stand on. Do not concern yourself with past failures, Ilya. Focus on the future. We have an opportunity for redemption. What do you need me to do? The Belladonna's are the only remaining threat to Adam's assault on Haven Academy. Oh, here it comes. And so, they must be silenced. S silenced? Like Sienna, they stand in the way of true progress for our people. We would never put such a burden on you alone, of course. Your brothers and sisters will be at your side. But your relationship with their daughter makes you an integral part of this operation. Blake? We know how close you were with young Blake. Rest assured, High Leader Taurus has requested she be taken alive. But we cannot risk having her present to defend her family. But the people of Menagerie... We'll come to understand what happens to those who speak out against the White Fang. And we'll be left without a leader until our victory is complete. Unnecessary sacrifice, Sister Elia. Wrong with that, how many sacrifices do you need? She's right to worry about the citizens. It's possible they may come to see Gira as a martyr. It is a risk we must take for our high leader. I will not allow them to ruin this. The Belladonna name has brought me nothing but grief. You've done well in finding the deserter. Bring her to me alive. But not before you've slaughtered her family. I have a promise to keep. He seems unwell. <laughs> he carries with him a tremendous burden. Are we sure he is the one to lead us? For now, we must do what is best for the Faunus. <sighs> yes. Brother Yuma, did you see Tagira's messenger? He rests beneath the waves, along with his warning. Saw that. Then as well. Still a flying Faunus, we haven't seen that before. <sighs> and the ending. I think it came in a bit more. I came in. I was like, "This could be a good episode," <laughs> and I'm leaving more stressed than I came in. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. This is the fifth episode out of what sixteen. So there's eleven episodes to conclude this. Ugh. Oh my god. I mean. I we saw we we saw the messenger dying like a mile away. There was yeah. no way in hell that he was getting to Haven, and that's probably how uh, Blake and Son are going to get to Haven is mm -hmm. uh, to to reunite with Team Ruby. But now I am really scared for Gira and Kali. I I don't think they'll die. Just but Rooster Teeth has done some dickish things in the past, so. Or at least one of them will die. Oh, God. Don't... Oh, you're stressing <laughs> me out, dude. I'm stressing myself out just <laughs> thinking about this. Really, I don't know what's worse. Both of them dying or one of them dying? I feel like if if one of them dies, it's probably going to be Gira. Probably. It's probably going to be Gira. And they're like they said, they're probably going to see it as a martyr. Yeah, maybe... Because he spoke out against them, then he suddenly dies. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's gonna be... I mean, like they said, it's it's a risk. It's either gonna go one of two ways. Either the mm -hmm. Faunists are going to fall into line out of fear, or the Faunists are going to... To revolt. To revolt, essentially, yes. And really, in terms of the core members of the White Fang, either is acceptable, because if... Think about it, if Menagerie gets really, really pissed, mm -hmm. that's just gonna draw more grim. Yep keep them occupied in Menagerie, stopping them from going to to helping out Haven. Because we know it's an island, and we know they're a Seagram. Yeah, they're a Seagram. 
So well, also, what about this? Like maybe this because this 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 season is supposed mm-hmm. to be about like rebuilding. So or the yes. la- last one was like dealing with it. This one is like rebuilding, and mm-hmm. they they've pretty much said at the end of this volume, it's going to be like okay, we're back together. We got knocked down. We're tougher. We're stronger, and we're ready for the next challenge. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, maybe the attack on Haven actually happens this volume, mm-hmm. and because let's just say Gira died, he's mm-hmm. seen as a martyr. That's what sparks the Faunus to go to Haven to defend it. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would be interesting. I know that's just a theory out of my ass, but <laughs> that's assuming one of them dies or whatever. Hopefully, none of them die. I, I know that would be amazing if none of them died, but, but who the fuck know knows? <laughs> we all know how Rooster Teeth likes to work. How do you think Ilya's gonna? I kind of feel like Ilya won't go through with it. That's what I'm thinking too. The way she kind of, her body language in the episode kind of gave me that. Yeah. She just didn't seem like she. She was like, "Oh, this is." She was told, "Oh, you got to kill your best your friend, best friend's family." <laughs> Yeah, and so she's like, "But why would I do that?" It wasn't. It wasn't why should I or, do that. It was more like, "Should can, I? can we avoid doing that?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like, "No, unnecessary sacrifice." Mm-hmm. Hence the title's <sighs> name. Yeah, and the, yeah, let's just talk about like the idea of sacrificing for the greater good for a minute, because that is something that I actually really enjoy talking about because. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things... I love Moral Dilemmas. Yes. It's it's absolutely perfect. Like, one of um, my favorite superhero abilities is Mystique's shape-shifting ability. Mm-hmm. And it's not because not necessarily because you can become anyone. It's what you would do with that. Yes. You can, you can be evil. You can commit crimes. You can do essentially anything you want. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're not stupid about it, you'll never get caught. Mm-hmm. Because it's impossible. But on the other hand, you can use that power... You, you can just live a normal life or... You know, mm-hmm. use it for good or whatever. Uh, so the moral knife edge, you could mm-hmm. literally fall off it. Yes. And this whole necessary sacrifice thing is like, yes, some sometimes sacrifices need to be made. Mm-hmm. What kind of sacrifices? Well, in the White Fang's case, it's a death, it's an advance, it's a destruction. But that's mm-hmm. not necessarily like that's not necessarily what a sacrifice is. Yes, it's. Especially to these people, obviously, mm-hmm. this wasn't a sacrifice. This was get them getting people out of the, the way. way. So. Mm-hmm. I think Ilya sees it like that. Yeah, I mean, Ilya does... She did fall under the, the spell of, like, okay, this is what we have to do. But even when they, like, mention that mm-hmm. uh, Sienna was dead, she was... She accepted that, like, mm-hmm. as a sacrifice... But at the same time, she had it looked like she had something in the back of her head, basically saying like, you know, this I wish right. I wish there was some other way we could do this, mm-hmm. like asking Sienna to step down or imprisoning her at the very least. Yes, why do they have to kill her? Right, exactly. They just flat out. Mm-hmm. They could have locked her up and not let anyone know. Yeah, exactly. That that would have achieved the same goal. Yes, but of course it's Adam, and Adam thinks the only way is destruction. Yeah, and Adam is. Quick, it seems like he's very quickly going down in a, just this deep spiral. And, mm-hmm. I mean, we... He's very conceited. Yes, he's very conceited. He's very spiteful. I mean, Blake said it best, but... Um, it's... Ugh. It's like, I wonder... Because the two, the two like, whatever they are, the advisors or whatever... Um, yeah. Something like that. I really think that they are the true power behind the scenes mm-hmm. because they they you know they've come up with all the plans, they relay to all the messages, mm-hmm. they control the information, and and they set it themselves. It's like they don't need Adam. Technically. Yeah, they need Adam as well, a figurehead. Yeah, for now, exactly. But they are not above saying, "Well, Adam's getting a little too big for his shoes. We may have to silence him." Mm-hmm. And then put someone else in that. Yeah, not them that because power vacuum. Right, and then not them because they are the ones behind, behind the scenes. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So, there. I think they are the real threat. Mm-hmm. And at first, you really wouldn't have thought that when you first. No, saw them. absolutely not. They were just the the typical messengers. Mm-hmm. But now, 
with this episode, you kind of see this whole different side of them where you're like, oh, well, if they're all doing this and they're kind of plotting everything and putting the pieces in place, who's not to say just, you know, Adam is just a pawn. Yeah, they are, plan. they're like the Jafar to Adam Sultan. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's intense. And, ah, oh God. I just want to, like, so far none of these episodes have, like, been... Okay, this is a win. <laughs> the only time it was a, the only time it was a win was sort of with Weiss and uh, Yang when they reignited. But even mm -hmm. so, they're still stuck in Raven's camp. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a win, but <laughs> but we still have to fight Raven. <laughs> <laughs> we still have, we still have to convince Raven to send us there. And mm -hmm. I mean, they're in uh, they are in Haven. They know an attack is coming, mm -hmm. and they really have no plan other than let's try to hire some huntsmen that are... Not so reputable huntsmen. Yeah, not so reputable huntsmen, and just train up as much as we can <laughs> mm -hmm. and hope everything kind of plans out. And I, I'm only assuming that um, Crow and Ozpin are also doing like other stuff to try and gather information. Mm -hmm. for Oz point. Yeah, for Ozpin it's a little harder since he's 12 now. But um, Crow definitely is, and <laughs> and then there's the huge disadvantage of Lionheart not exactly being on their side. Well, I, I think he's on their side. Well, he's, he's just <laughs> he he's just a little tied up. <laughs> he's a little tied up at the moment. <laughs> he he just can't come out and say no. Yeah, because Salem will kill him. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Crow. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor Watts will kill him. Yeah, <laughs> there's someone back there. <laughs> So, oh god, and let me think. Uh, we didn't see Hazel, but he's probably working with uh, Adam. Adam, or in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep Adam in line yeah. under Salem's wishes. So actually, that kind of brings up something that we commented last time, how mm -hmm. Adam is sort of like, he's kind of young for the position, but Salem is using him to further her own agenda. Mm -hmm. And I think we mentioned that, you know, there can be a time where she just says, fuck this, I don't need it anymore, and kills Adam. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if... Who who will betray Adam first? The White Fang or Salem? It's a coin toss. <laughs> it really is. And depending on what happens these next few volumes, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, there's... There's the, tip, there's the stereotypical cliche of, like, the villain going to the heroes for help. Mm -hmm. So there is a tiny... Yeah possibility that adam might realize the error of his ways well not not that he does that not that he knows <laughs> well, the errors ways but knows yes. that he needs help mm -hmm. and he can't trust anyone except for blake mm -hmm. but of course you know he, he kind of wants to kill he blake. <laughs> uh he did a couple of dickish things no like stabbing blake uh, and stabbing blake uh, cutting, cutting off Yang's arms, arms yeah uh trying to behead her uh, and then this new order of murdering her family. You mean Order 66? Uh, well, if it, <laughs> if it was Order 66, he would kill everybody. But, um... No need to get into bloody details. Seeing, seeing the direction that they're going, I don't see that cliche happening. But it's like one of those things, like, it could happen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so... It's... Uh... Oh! Um, really important. The whole speech with Ruby. Mm -hmm. about what happened at the fall of Beacon. Yes. I have been waiting for someone to mention that for two damn volumes and talk about it. Because they never did. <laughs> they never did. They didn't. And but... I, re I really wanted John to, like, say something as well, if, you know, if he was there. But he was finally we got a little bit of uh, disillusion uh, disillusionment from Ruby. Yes. Because for the past few volumes, she's always so happy. She's always so happy. She's always looking forward. She's mm -hmm. always trying to stay positive. And we've seen her, you know, her facial expressions, her body movement. Mm -hmm. But we never had a moment where she sat down and said, "This is what happened. This is how I felt. I lost two of my best friends at the time, mm -hmm. and I was. I mean, I've been looking for that." That's what I like. I like emotional weight. I like emotional development. I like 
I like pain. Character this, development. I love uh. Ruby because it's painful. I recently saw uh, Volume 3, like, all in one go, mm -hmm. and I was so used to seeing it week by week by week and having the shock value kind of deteriorate. If you watch that all in one sitting, it's painful. Ooh. I almost cried through it again. Because Penny fucking... It's Penny! And Pira! Penny wasn't combat ready. Fuck you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I saw mean, that kudos, on kudos on the joke, but fuck you. I saw that on you. iPhone this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was so sad because it was the it was penny it, i mean it showed i showed the wires wrapping yeah, yeah, around yeah, yeah. and i, was I, like, oh. I saw i saw that post like a week after uh <laughs> after that episode came out and i had said to the guy but the fan art yeah. is so good looking <laughs> but anyway fuck you for that joke but that was brilliant person brilliantly <laughs> timed uh so anyway i'm really happy that rooster teeth finally i mean it wasn't it wasn't too much but i'm glad mm. they said something and I wish John was there because I think he has a little bit to say to Ospin. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's one thing I I theorize what would happen is because he would yell at Ospin because Ospin. Oz knew everything and knew what Pira was getting into. Yeah, he couldn't stop it at that point, mm -hmm. but you know he didn't share that. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things is like you can uh, from John's perspective, it's completely selfish to mm -hmm. to yell at Ospin. Yes. But at the same time... Because it was Pierre's decision. Right, it was Pierre's decision and stuff like that. And she was semi-informed. And she was semi-informed. But she could also, but he could also see that Oz kind of pushed her into it, which is not completely wrong. Yes. So, I, can't, I wanted that to happen. So far, I don't... At this point, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But I kind of want more... Um, and I'm not... And for the Sean haters out there, fuck off, Okay. <laughs> This is my personal thought, and I think Jean has... Yeah, he's the everyman. He's the one that we can most relate to because we can't do any of this shit. And we're the, the, he's the underdog. You want the underdog to succeed. So, I don't care that you think he's dumb. I don't care if you think his ideas are stupid. He's not my favorite character, but this is how... Okay, I went into a bit of a rant. <laughs> but... All in all, um, I mean, you. What do you What do you think about that? Someone that's not my opinion. <laughs> I think John just needs to man up, and like he's been doing. You know, we saw him when Ruby found him and he was training. Mm -hmm. He's manning up, and he's going to. He's going to figure everything out. Yeah. Just he had to get through his guilt for letting Pira die. Even though it really wasn't his fault. But I don't believe he views it as Ozpin's fault entirely. Because Ozpin... How do I put it? Ozpin told her what she was getting into for the most part. Mm -hmm. She knew the story of the Maidens. He told her that tons of people want... Or, back in the day, wanted that power. And you can always assume that somebody still does. At any given point in time. Mm -hmm. Because the story can be passed down and whatnot. Yeah. So, obviously, she knew what she was getting into. It just wasn't... We just weren't expecting it to happen so soon. Right. For her to die. Yeah. Because she, you know, the shot through her, the heart. Her hand, her hand was forced, yes. essentially, to take on Cinder. Mm-hmm. And that's... I mean, that's really it. Oh, what do you think about, like, John as a character? He can grow. Well, well yeah. I, he he has boot, he has bigger boots to fill, but he he'll probably fill them fill them by, um, I would say volume six or seven. Yeah, or hell, maybe at the end of this one. Yeah. yeah. He he is growing. He's developing, and mm -hmm. he's definitely changed a lot more in the last two volumes than the other three. So. Mm -hmm. And hey, maybe we'll even get to see his uh, family sooner uh, or later. Yeah, we we do you know where his family is? No. Okay. Not that I, I can. Remember. Not that I can pull off the top of my head at the moment. Yeah, I don't think they specify. That's why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, the the one other thing I want to see in this, uh, I don't know if they'll get to it or if they even cross their minds. But, um, Pira was in uh, Mistral. Mm -hmm. She went to Mistral. So if they could run to Pira's family, mm. that would be an awesome can of worms for them to open. Mm. 
<laughs> uh oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I actually wrote about that on the on the community website. I'll send you a link. Uh, but it's I. That's the kind of thing that I really like. I like painful drama. <laughs> I don't like dramas on TV because those are fucking. Those are just stupid. But like this kind of pain, I enjoy analyzing and seeing what different people. Uh, how different people write about it, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if Monty thought of that, or if uh, Miles and Carrie are thinking of that, or will pass it on, or whatever their whatever uh, their thing is. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's what I want to see next. <laughs> <sighs> so, next episode will probably be uh, Yang and Weiss probably learning about. Uh, the relics. The, yeah, the relics. What Sanders, Raven's role? Salem. Is. Yes, it, not uh, Sanderson. Salem. Yes, Salem. Yes, and then Raven's role in that, and then we'll probably end with them going through mm-hmm. uh, the portal and maybe finally meeting up with Ruby, and then like Yang decking her across the face for leaving home without uh, without her or something along well, something along those lines. But Yang, you were having PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I mean. <laughs> I hope they get. I actually hope that gets kind of brought up in the next episode, mm-hmm. like Raven notices or something. So, yeah, you know what I really, really want to see. What I want to, I want to. You, you mentioned it just a minute ago, where they, where we learn Raven's whole position on everything, what she was doing for Ozpin. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of curious what she was doing the entire time. She was probably working along the same same lines Mine's as Crow. Crow. Yeah, but. Uh, Either she didn't like what she was doing, or she just saw the fut- the futility of it, and uh, just try to save her own skin. Yeah, just save. Or, it. or maybe, uh, you know, maybe this all ties back to what happened to Ruby's mom, Summer. So, we'll have to see next episode, which is a week from now. God damn it! And hopefully, this video doesn't get blocked. <laughs> so, until then, this is Yay for the Wolf. Obsidian Melody. And we'll see you guys next time.